Hello, welcome to the Monday, December 3rd, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Checkpoint is writing about a recent CryptoCoin miner that they came across. They're calling King Miner. Now, King Miner has been around for a while, but it's one of those CryptoCoin miners that keeps evolving in this latest version. They cleaned, modified somewhat the configuration file for it. This latest version will also add a number of registry keys with the value test in it. Based on the write-up by Checkpoint, you're not really clear what this is about, but it it could be sort of a check whether or not it's already running here. And of course, uh, one countermeasure that people sometimes take is that they pre-create these registry keys, sometimes cause of immunizing the system to infection. And of course, malware as a result is then going to change these names and values from time to time in order to evade these inoculations. But in general, I think what we're seeing here is that these crypto coin miners, they keep evolving. Yes, cryptocurrencies are decreasing in value, but they're not cheap enough where there's no point in mining them as long as you don't pay for the power and hardware. Now, the next story isn't really about a product that you probably have in your network. It's a fairly high-end oscilloscope made by Sickland that does suffer from vulnerabilities. Now, reason I mention this here is this is sort of a story that's close to my heart from way back over a decade ago in my physics days or so when I started to observe how some high-end oscilloscopes back then like Tektronix and such really ran Windows and usually a server version of Windows on the back end and obscured the fact with sort of your usual buttons and dials that you're used to from an oscilloscope. The reason these vulnerabilities in measurement equipment like this are so critical is that this high-end equipment you most often find in your most secretive research labs. And of course, there is very little chance to patch these devices with run-of-the-mill updates that you may receive, for example, from Microsoft. Quite often, they run quite a bit of specialized hardware and the like, and manufacturers insist, and usually for good reason, in only applying patches that are being received from the oscilloscope manufacturer, which of course does have a lead time of a few months sometimes after Microsoft released their patches. So I think this is really sort of one of those awareness pieces where all of these devices that you don't traditionally consider IT assets are properly inventoried and secured. And yes, if you can patch them, maybe you can at least isolate those networks or not network them at all. But not networking them at all sometimes doesn't work either because these devices then have to integrate into more complex experiments where you have multiple devices like it that actually have to communicate with each other. So this particular set of vulnerabilities affects sickland oscilloscopes and it's your usual Internet of Things set of vulnerabilities like hard-coded passwords, no authentication, unencrypted communication, and then of course, outdated software components. And sticking here a little bit with the engineering and R&D side of your respective organizations, another tool that you often find is CAD software, computer-aided design software. And here, of course, the big software pack that everybody's using is AutoCAD. Forcepoint has an interesting blog post about how malicious AutoCAD files have been used in some targeted attacks. Again, here you are targeting engineers and such that are designing new devices and new instruments. So very much the core of intellectual property in organization. AutoCAD, of course, as many of these complex packages, has its own scripting language. In AutoCAD, it's Lisp based. And these malicious AutoCAD files that are being delivered two engineers are using Lisp to execute arbitrary commands and then of course install the usual backdoors, malware and command and control channels. One interesting facet here is these AutoCAD files tend to be rather large. So the bad guys here 
did choose the postal service at least for some of these attacks as a delivery mechanism where they're actually mailing dvds or usb storage devices to engineers that then of course claim to have contained certain libraries certain parts uh, libraries and such uh, that engineers like to include in their autocad projects Forcepoint has a few indicators of compromise here, like for example, IP addresses and host names of a command control infrastructure being used. But remember, these are targeted attacks. So very likely that this is very flexible and uh, will move around depending on the target. I also doubt that your malware scanner will do a lot of good here with these AutoCAD files. They may detect the payload that's then being downloaded and run on the systems. Again, awareness is probably a critical skill here that your engineers know to be careful with any files that they are receiving uh, either from download sites uh, via the postal mail like in this case and even from partners uh, because it could easily happen that for example a partner's email gets compromised and then a fake file is being sent well and this is it for today so thanks and for listening now i got a couple of requests uh, last week because i made a mistake with the uh, age of this one particular malware sample whether we still hand out the raspberry pi well uh, we had stickers in november i'll continue the stickers in december because they were very popular and i sent out uh, quite a few stacks of mail so if you want any isc.sense.ed you slash sticker dot html january i think uh, we'll do another raspberry pi thanks and talk to you again tomorrow bye